Hello, my name is Richard Proper. I'm a neighbor of yours in Rye Brook. Sitting with me is Moj Akahian, whom I'm convinced is in love with Rye Brook. Moj is running for Village Trustee on March the 16th. I've met and spoken with many of you who are watching right now and have learned your concerns. I put together a list of questions for Moj, and we hope her responses will please you. Welcome, Moj. It's good to Thank have you, you here. Thank you very much, Richard. Moj, you have an interesting name, an accent, and a fascinating background. Tell the folks a little bit about yourself. I, uh, I will. Um, I moved to this country when I was 17 from Tehran, Iran, and uh, landed directly in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, I stayed there for two years and loved the wonderful hospitality of the people there. The one thing that I t t did take away with me from uh, Louisiana was um, a uh, very thick southern drawl and uh, <laughs> in combination with my Persian accent, you know, uh, when I had moved to San Francisco, no one could understand me. It took a few months before I could work that out. <laughs> But I uh, loved my time um, in Louisiana. Did you speak English when you got here? Um, I did. I had taken um, English language classes all throughout uh, middle school and high school and loved it. So, yes, yeah, so, uh, but of course, the English that I learned was the English from uh, Britain, not necessarily the American English. Well, you're, you're relatively new to Rye Brook. What specific experience do you bring that you think qualifies you to be a trustee in Rye Brook? Well, uh, you're right. I am new to this community, but um, I believe that a new perspective um, is an advantage rather than a disadvantage. Uh, I have no preconceived notions about how things should be running and um, how things were done in the past. So um, I think that is um, a positive thing. Um, and also, um, as far as um, being new in the community, I've been here for five years, but I feel that um, I am uh, grounded here, that I have a sense of belonging, and that is mostly because of the wonderful people I have met. I have made fabulous friends here, and uh, I have a sense of ownership for everything that happens in Rybrook, and that is partially because of the work that I've done in the past uh, three years. I worked with the Arbor's Homeowners Association in different capacity, um, just as a uh, board member, as vice president, president in the past, for the past year. And um, I have become familiar with some of the issues that uh, we face you know, day to day in our village and uh, believe that um, you know, I want to take action and I want to do something and I want to be um, a voice that matters and help my community. Um, as far as um, what I bring to the position, um, I can just tell you about my background, uh, again, you know, as someone who has worked very closely with uh, about 400 people uh, who live in our community, um, that the, principle, the principles of um, representing the interests of 400 people or 4,000 people, uh, it's basically the same. So you apply the same principles to a larger group of people. Um, also, as an attorney, um, I have the capacity to um, look at the uh, issues and uh, think about them analytically and apply the um, appropriate rules and codes and regulations to the set of facts. Um, I think all of these, uh, all of these experiences, you know, put together, uh, they provide me with the ability to represent the people of Rybrook. Well, you know, it's so refreshing to see a new face and hear a new voice. What made you decide to run independently under, under a brand new banner, We the People of Rye Brook, instead of running a group, which would seem to me to be much easier? Well, you're absolutely right. Running with established group is uh, definitely easier because uh, the political machinery is in place. Um, but, uh, you know, procedurally, it has taken me uh, some time to really find out what steps I needed to take. Uh, but at the meantime, I, th I think that that was definitely worth it because I did not have to give up on my ideals. And those ideals are uh, to be independent from political pressures and uh, political affiliations. You know, I can really bring the voice of all the citizens of Rybrook to the Board of Trustees uh, without worrying about which political toe I'm stepping on. 
Uh, and uh, in the past six years, uh, we have had uh, no contested elections in yeah. Rybrook, which, uh, in my opinion, it's rather undemocratic. Uh, I believe that people and the citizens have to have a choice. And the people that I've spoken to in the community are actually pretty excited about the fact that there is um, a new option and a new face and new presence in the village politics. I don't blame them. We missed having a competitive election. Uh, in, the, in the couple of minutes we have left, could you tell us a few specific issues that you plan to address and how? Well, I think, you know, we all know that uh, there is a grim financial uh, landscape out there now locally and uh, uh, nationally, in fact, internationally. And uh, I know that um, many people are anxious. Many people in our own community are very anxious about um, where we are financially and they're worried about their jobs and they have to tighten their belts. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that whole attitude should reflect in the attitude of the Village Board of Trustees and what we do there as far as our budget is concerned. Uh, for example, the uh, property taxes in Rybrook have gone up uh, at a rate of 4.7% in the past uh, five years from uh, 10.7 million to 12.8 million. Now, this is not a huge amount. I think uh, it is not really a cause for worry, but at the same time, um, this rate of increase is higher than the rate of inflation. And um, I believe that we need to keep our taxes at 0% increase. It is a concern for people on fixed incomes, and, and uh, there are plenty of them living in the village of Rye Brook. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, we, we keep our um, tax increases at zero. It's not easy to do, but there are sacrifices that we have to all make. And I believe there are ways of doing this, uh, combining services, you know, maybe that is uh, the non-emergency services and uh, the back office administrative uh, services that could be combined with, let's say, uh, maybe villages or towns around Rybrook that would be beneficial for us. Um, another experience that I have personally is the fact that on the board of the Arbors, uh, we had, uh, we passed an austerity um, budget and uh, we had, uh, we cut if, if absolutely every uh, amount of fat that there was because we needed to uh, make certain that our uh, residents were not, uh, you know, faced with an increase in the fees, in the monthly association fees. Um, and um, yes, some services had to be cut, but nothing essential. So I think it's definitely doable. Um, something else that I would like to bring to the forefront um, is, um, you know, the village building code. Um, I was exposed to uh, the building code during the past year because of our community and uh, the um, updates that we had to go through. And I realized that uh, some of these codes are written in a very, with a broad stroke, um, where they could be subject to abuse. I think these codes need to be clarified. Last but not least, um, I would uh, also like to encourage more open and understanding relationship and communication between the citizens of uh, our community and the village, uh, the village staff, the board of trustees. And uh, unfortunately, there is a perceived um, lack of trust uh, between uh, some of the residents of Rybrook and uh, the administration or the village um, as a mm, whole. Yes. And uh, whether this is uh, truly the case or it's uh, something that's perceived uh, and just a problem of perception, I think that has to change. I think that uh, we need civility and respect and openness, uh, both real and perceived, to be the hallmark of our village. Well, it, it's, it's, it's very good listening to you, and I, I wish we had a lot more time because I'm sure that we can come up with a lot more questions and answers. But in the meanwhile, we have to sign off, so I want to say if our viewers have any questions for Moj, please call her personally at 914-565-3063. And then remember to vote for Moj Agahian on March 16th. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you very much, Richard.